church crouches in the crook of dead man's curve like an old leather catcher's mitt. After the burial, huddled on the hill, my daddy read her will then and there. Now my jubbo didn't have a lot, but what she had is what we got. And she bequeathed me her genuine leather pocketbook, a bone bag that dangled off her wrist for years, like a growth, a bunion or something. You'd have thought she was hauling state secrets or some other family's fortune the way she policed that purse. Set it down, Mama. Might as well have been kiss my ass in that woman's mind. Well, lumbering back to the car, I didn't get far before I knelt down in the Johnson grass and exposed her Tennessee tote sack to daylight. Chicklet spilled when I clicked open the class. A vial of pills rolled out in the grass. Some butter rum lifesavers and a narrow tooth comb. Chapstick, shed keys. An old birthday card she'd gotten from me wadded up Kleenex and a half a stick of double mint gum. What I really wanted was a rubber change purse. The thing's probably now on the floorboard of the hearse. It was red with a slit down the middle. She'd pinch it open take her pointer and thumb and then press the coins down into my palm at offering time when they pass the plate at church. But it was there in the side zip pocket where I found a secret she thought she'd buried. It was a love letter from a farm hand, Howard McDaniel. I love you too, scrawled in the margin of the yellowed note. Her purse gaped open there in the grass, contents exposed. I felt like I'd stolen her clothes. This woman who swore she was never naked before her own husband. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. Thank you.